Let's uh, continue our uh, Franco-Italian day for early stage uh, career researchers. Um, yeah, I see that the panelists are putting the camera on. Okay, thank you for being here in time. Um, we're still waiting for uh, one of our panelists, but let that um, let's start and then we see if uh, Mr. Fattori will also join us. Um, so thank you to our participants to being to stand here with us and also welcome to those who have recently joined us. Um, if you have just joined us, please introduce yourself in the chat box and uh, if afterwards during each presentation you have uh, questions for our speakers, don't hesitate to put your questions either in a Q&A section or directly in a chat box. And we will try to reply at least uh, to maximum of them. So uh, we are going to, to continue our day uh, with the panel discussion with PhD holders. Um, and from both countries, sharing experience and providing also insights um, on they, uh, how to get a job as a PhD and also some mobility experience. So um, I'm pleased to welcome our speakers. First, uh, Dr. Alberto Previti, um, nuclear codes engineer at Framatome. Welcome. Also, Dr. Christina Zanini, scientific editor and business development manager at BioAir. Welcome, Thank Christina. You. Thank you. Thank um, Dr. Sebastian Alfonso, a researcher at COISPA Technology and Recherca. Uh, thank you, welcome. Thank you. And also, we will be joined by Dr. Paola Fattori, CEO and co founder and Tissue and Sterify. Good evening. Uh, hello. So, just to remind you that you will each have 10 minutes for your presentations, and then uh, I will ask you one or two questions afterwards. Um, so once again, participants, don't hesitate to put your questions uh, in the chat box uh, or in a Q&R session, section. So we will start with Alberto. Alberto, please, the floor is yours. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation today. Well, uh, uh, I am today a uh, nuclear uh, an energy engineer that I, I've been, uh, I took my engineering diploma degree in Italy in, uh, at the University of Bologna in, at, in, at the beginning of uh, 2010. And today I'm a nuclear engineer and developer at Framatome since 2017. So how do I get there? Well, I, I, I took a passion for, I mean, for numerical simulation and for, I mean, in the energy sector, especially at the end of my high school. So I decided to <clears throat> enroll the energy engineering uh, courses uh, in my academic path and uh, during that path I, I i got a passion in particular for uh, for transport phenomena for neutron and photons in particular and that's the reason why at the end of my master i went to the united states for <laughs> my thesis project in which I have the opportunity to join a completely different country with completely different rules. And uh, that was the motivation to enroll a PhD program afterwards at the University of Bologna who uh, that I developed uh, also in joint collaboration with the CA in uh, Saclay in France. 
And that's uh, the first uh, contact that I had with France. That was at the end of my PhD. I spent almost one year in France, in Paris. That is a collaboration that uh, has been possible thanks to the fact that the professor in uh, Bologna and in, uh, and in Saclay uh, knew each other. So I had the opportunity to spend one year in France. Then I, I came back to Italy for almost four years. And uh, when I worked as a postdoc and as an engineer uh, in, a, in a private company. Then I decided to go back to France. Why? In fact, uh, in, during my PhD, I devoted my, my research in uh, the numerical simulation of uh, nuclear reactors. At that time, uh, we were we are speaking about the period I enrolled the PhD was just before Fukushima. At that time, uh, between, uh, in fact, Fukushima happened just three months after the beginning of my PhD. And at that time, Italy was going to restart the nuclear uh, program at that time. So that's the reason why a lot of people at that time started to pursue a nuclear career. And um, but when I ended my PhD, <laughs> the situation uh, changed completely. And that's the reason why I moved to a different sector uh, in Italy. But uh, I felt, I mean, uh, the need to come back to what I have been interested in for a long time. So that's the reason why from a, center, a certain point, I decided to continue and to try to go back to France. And um, I had the opportunity uh, to join Framatom at the end of uh, 2017. Uh, and today I'm working as a nuclear code specialist. This means that I'm doing numerical, uh, I'm writing numerical uh, programs uh, with computer programs that are able to simulate the behavior of nuclear reactors. And that's uh, basically what I've uh, studied for such a long time during my PhD and during my university. Um, the fact that I have a very, I mean, specific career path, I have to say, because I've changed so much time the subject of my academic and professional interest uh, gives me today uh, the possibility to, I mean, to work in this specific sector, but with the insight of having work in different sector. And uh, most importantly, uh, I've worked both in Italy and in France. There are a lot of Italians in the nuclear sector here in France so working uh, as a nuclear engineers who worked exclusively in France for a very pretty obvious reasons. But uh, I have worked in both countries and I, I see today that the fact that I have experience in different industrial sector and in different countries gives me the possibility to understand better how to accomplish my task, ordinary task, and how to have new ideas because I can couple the, I mean, the, the knowledge of different fields together. Um, Regarding uh, people wanting to potentially pursue an international career, uh, what I have to suggest is that, I mean, Italy and France are from some aspects very similar, but from other aspects are very different. Um, uh, an Italian PhD like, me in France uh, have to face a system that is meant to, I mean, to, to absorb the industrial, uh, the industrial sector is meant to absorb mostly the French graduates that comes from French schools uh, with a French path. And so it means that someone who comes from uh, the outside have some a lot of advantages because uh, I mean, uh, we, we knew a different system. So we have some new insights, but at the same time, we have to understand the new system in which we are entering to. So my first su suggestion is to try to understand uh, the, uh, the French system, for instance, at first. And this is the first key point to succeed the interviews and, uh, and the job applications. 
And uh, the second one, I mean, is to consider working abroad as an opportunity. It's a very enriching opportunity. I've changed, uh, I mean, country uh, several times in my professional uh, life. And uh, each time has been a, a new adventure with a lot of new possibilities. And living in France, uh, it's, I mean, uh, especially in my sector, there are a lot of people coming from a lot of countries in the world. This is very stimulating and there are, frankly speaking, no barriers. So this is uh, very good because once you get into, it can be a, a little bit difficult at the beginning to get accustomed to the new system. But at that point, it's, I mean, I, I like very well, I mean, the, 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 the ecosystem in which I'm today. I guess it was 10 minutes, so it's 55, so. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alberto. Um, I have a question for you. So since, as you said, you've been working in France, Italy, USA, did you notice differences in the recruitment process and what are they? Well, uh, well uh, in the US, it's completely different. I was there just for an internship, so I have I cannot speak too much about the how the HR works in the US. That was just I mean a collaboration between the two universities. So I mean I I had uh, a way to get in touch with the uh, host professor. So uh, that was very simple. Once I got the right name. Um, Regarding industry, uh, Italy and France are, are different for, I mean, are different for, uh, because of the fact that the status of an engineer is not the same. That, that, that's the first point. Uh, normally in, uh, in, it, in, in France, the engineer has the, uh, I don't know how to say this in English, is uh, cadre ou quadro. In, in Italian, uh, status, executive, uh, yeah, executive uh, which is not the case uh, in Italy. And uh, normally uh, engineers in France are uh, hired uh, normally with a permanent uh, contract straight away, which is not uh, almost never the case in Italy in my experience. I, I, well, I had a permanent contract in Italy, but it was a rather the exception rather than the rule. Um, uh, also, the recruitment process in France uh, for people not having a PhD, normally uh, may be simplified a lot uh, having an internship with the, with, the, with the companies. Typically, French uh, students uh, have to spend uh, the last six months of their master in uh, in the industry and uh, in a guest industry. And this means that they have a, a kind of speedy lane to enter into the system. I had uh, several students in my, in my uh, two students in my professional uh, career here in France. And this is a quicker way to get into the system, which is very, I mean, it's not that used in Italy uh, up to the, that point. Um, also, uh, in France, uh, the recruitment process is based on very short curriculum and uh, with few key points. The idea is to identify the uh, the keywords that the HR is expecting uh, in France. On the contrary, in Italy, normally we have much longer CV. And so that's the first error I, I made myself when I uh, start uh, applying uh, to jobs in, in France that I had uh, an Italian, uh, an, uh, I mean, an Italian style uh, CV translated in French, of course, but in an Italian style CV that is much more uh, concentrated to competencies and uh, it's much longer normally and uh, in france uh, that's not the, the same so i mean that's the reason why i was saying that uh, it is needed to succeed in the application to know a little bit how the system works on, on the other side 
and to, to write the application in, in the correct way. And also in France, sometimes the big companies have the um, a cooptation procedure uh, that has uh, is a methodology to for an employee that exists in the company to present a potential applicant uh, that at that point have bigger chances. I mean, not to get hired, but to get interviewed at, at that point. Uh, this is something that, uh, in my experience in Italy, was less used. Um, and I mean, for the HR process, I, I guess it's more or less the same. There are not that, that many differences, but there are slight differences that may account for big differences at the end. Yeah. Thank you very much, Alberto, for your insights. They're very uh, useful. As you say, there might be small differences, but that, they, that will, we, uh, they will make the difference. So thank you very much for the sharing. Also, uh, my message to the participants, just for you to know that at the end, we will also take some questions addressed to all speakers of this round table. So <laughs> uh, please reflect uh, on it. Thank you very much. And let's move to Christina Zanini. Welcome and please, Christina. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to everyone. And thank you for this opportunity to introduce myself and my experience after my PhD um, in biochemistry. So um, in brief, after a degree in chemistry, uh, I became a chemical assistant in uh, Hospital Regina Margherita in Turin. And during this work, I obtained a master degree, uh, degree in clinical biochemistry and molecular medicine. Then I moved uh, uh, in university and I obtained, uh, I got a PhD in biochemistry and cellular biotechnology. Uh, this long study uh, permit, to, uh, permit me to become uh, a researcher. Uh, at the beginning of my work uh, in the university, I um, work with a proteomic approach for discover new drugs in tumor, in particular in medulloblastoma and glioblastoma that are nervous system cancer. And for this, I published different work and obtained some patent with the university. But um, after five, six years of uh, experience in university, uh, I would like to, to I, I want to have a real job because uh, I work a lot with grant and uh, no, no permanent position. So I decided to move to, to find a job in a biotech and I ask help to my um, tutor, my prof during uh, the, the PhD. Uh, he helped me to, to know different biotech in Italy. So um, during uh, this, uh, this uh, find, uh, the, the search, I find uh, a position uh, in Euroclone, that is a biotech company in Italy, uh, that work in the, cost, in the, in the context of uh, discover new reagents and consumable for stem cell. So I need I start to study stem cell and uh, inside the, the, the company I develop uh, a new uh, line of uh, research reagent for the growth of stem cell for differentiation of this cell and for some application uh, in the context of advanced therapy product. This experience uh, um, helped me to, to become a key uh, person inside uh, the company because uh, then uh, the company is, uh, she said, in two companies different. One is BioAir that produces instrument lab equipment in the context of control of the contamination. For instance, they produce uh, laminar flow incubator, is Isolator and isolator as uh, an alternative to the use of clean room in uh, 
in uh, advanced therapy medical product. So now in BioERA, I'm the key uh, person that uh, understand the needed of uh, the customer because they work with complex process in biological uh, context. And I translate this needed to the team of engineering that need to uh, design and define the layout of this equipment. So uh, my experience, experience, my study, my previous study and my PhD helped me to understand complex biological process. And my competence are now very appreciated from uh, engineering team because they need to understand uh, this, uh, this um, uh, needed for uh, for the market. Uh, this is my brief experience, but uh, I can uh, suggest to the PhD study st student students sorry uh, to to open. <laughs> Is uh, the mind to try to uh, work with different contexts, not only chemists, not only biology, but to try to understand other applications like robotic, like uh, um, data, uh, complex data uh, system, uh, like uh, like P personal computer and analysis of big data because the, the, these skills are very important to work inside now inside the biotech and inside uh, uh, the market that require um, very a lot of competence in different context and to integrate the different context in a work in, in a team okay if you have any you. particular question, I'm here for you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christina. So yes, we're, we're waiting for the questions. I have some. Um, you mentioned that your tutor uh, suggested you some biotech companies. Um, was it, a, did, did you realize some networking experience? Did you did some, networking interviews with people from these companies how did you how did you do this research yes. But um, it's very simple. I suggest to use uh, the, the social because now, uh, for instance, uh, in LinkedIn, for instance, there are uh, all the companies that work in life science, the big and the small and spin-off. And uh, uh, with uh, some, uh, um, with, with, with uh, um, this, uh, this kind of social, it's possible to, 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 to discuss with the different person, with and uh, um, build a, a, a a new a new connection with people and, uh, and it's possible also to to ask some uh, suggestion how to to move uh, uh, towards uh, a, a job and uh, biotech so i think this is a a good uh, a good start to a good point to start from uh, join uh, a new job I, I work a lot with LinkedIn, it's very useful for this. Okay, uh, thank you very much for suggesting LinkedIn as a, as a tool for networking. Uh, we have uh, another question also on how many opportunities outside academia are present in Italy for a life science PhD? Um, but sincerely, there are um, not too much, but uh, um, for instance, in the context of uh, regulatory affair, there is a lot of request to have people because also for, for, ex for instance, for advanced therapy product, uh, the regulatory part is very important. So uh, the, the biotech uh, search for people that understand the, the uh, Eudrex volume four, that is the GMP, the good manufacturing practice for, for produce advanced therapy product like cell or gene therapy. And uh, I know that uh, the biotech need this uh, kind of speciality inside so i suggest to to have a look to this uh, application okay, wonderful thank you very much do you have more questions i'm just checking on it um also about your position um which reflect business development manager did you have 
did you have any previous experience in business, some business notions? No, no, uh, absolutely no. I ob obtained the skill with uh, the um, help of my senior colleague that uh, introduced me in the context of business for, uh, for example, the marketing team, the vendors team. And um, also uh, it's something that uh, become naturally when you speak with customer, with other uh, person in other biotech. So it's not uh, necessary to study. I, I think for me, this is my experience. It's not necessary to study a lot of business, but uh, it's important to have relationship with people in a scientific context, in technical context of the product, of the service that uh, the, the biotech provides. So I think it is... Uh... Okay, so it means that even if you're missing some skills, proposition you, you can, can apply obtain, and develop yes obtain uh, together with uh, the other colleagues that uh, help uh, the people to grow wonderful <laughs> this is this is very good to know and also encouraging for the yeah. people hesitating yeah. sometimes to, yeah. to apply or not for a for job position so thank you for the for this insight christina thank you to um, you uh, let's move to our next speaker, Sebastian Alfonso. Sebastian, it's, it's up to you. Uh, good afternoon to everybody uh, and uh, thank you for inviting me for sharing my experience. Uh, so uh, thank you for the introduction. My name is Sebastian Alfonso. I'm a researcher in aquaculture and uh, fish welfare at Poispa Tecnologia e Ricerca at Bari in Italy. So uh, I am French. I uh, obtained a um, bachelor's degree in oceanography at the University of Marseille in France. And then uh, I moved uh, always in France to Saint Etienne to study, to study behavior in ecology. And uh, after my master's degree, I continue with a PhD at uh, the IFREMER which is a leading institute of uh, marine biology in France and uh, also in collaboration with the University of Montpellier. And uh, during my PhD, I studied the behavioral and physiological response of fishes to uh, different environmental conditions, uh, such as uh, pollu pollutant exposure or also different aquaculture conditions, uh, for instance, uh, variation of uh, oxygen concentration or change in uh, ammonia concentration. And uh, during my PhD, I was involved in a European project with uh, researchers from different countries, uh, including Italy, Denmark, Sweden, or Spain. And uh, during my PhD, we, we had a lot of meeting uh, with all of these researchers, uh, sometimes in France, sometimes in Italy or other countries. And uh, we exchange about uh, progress, uh, about our work, uh, about uh, different tasks of the project. And uh, during this time, I meet, uh, so I meet a different researcher and uh, some from Coispa in Italy. And uh, when I complete my PhD, I uh, discussed with different colleagues and I told them that I was, uh, I, I wanted to uh, go abroad and uh, go for a new experience uh, abroad. And I discussed with uh, colleagues at Coispa and they told me that uh, potentially they have uh, new opportunities, uh, a kind of postdoc opportunities for two years. And uh, so, uh, after completing my PhD, I, um, after, uh, let's say, four or five months, uh, there, I saw an opportunity on the CRISPR website about uh, a researcher position, uh, which was fitting uh, totally my skills. And uh, so I was uh, very happy and I uh, applied to this position. And um, to apply to this position, I had to do um, 
uh, I have to, to show my chibi for sure. And also uh, I have to write uh, three, four pages uh, explaining my, uh, also my skills, what, why I want this position uh, and uh, what, uh, what kind of research I want to do at COISPA and uh, in the future. So I applied. And after two weeks, uh, we had an interview with Skype. And uh, three, four days uh, after, I get uh, the position. And I was uh, very happy. And so I, I moved to Italy. And today, uh, I have a permanent position. After two years of uh, work at Coispa, they proposed me a permanent position. And uh, I decided I, I decide to, to stay in Italy because uh, I, I liked very much Italy. and. Uh, as Alberto said, it's, uh, we have a lot of similarity between Italy and France and also some difference. Uh, but I mean, if you, uh, you want to move uh, between France or Italy or uh, the opposite, it is not so difficult than uh, other country. I mean, uh, I am, um, before choosing Coispa, I had the possibility to go in other countries, for instance, uh, um, Sweden or uh, uh, Iceland, and I, I think the difference between France and this country is very different. Uh, so, uh, in my opinion, it will be it will be more difficult for French or Italian people to acclimate uh, to such country. And uh, okay, more or less, I, I finish. Just uh, my suggestion is uh, during your PhD uh, to work with your network when you meet scientists uh, in conferences or by mail, keep contact, uh, keep always contact with people and maybe in one, two years, 10 years, uh, you will uh, need to contact uh, back these people and uh, maybe they have an opportunity for you or uh, I think uh, the network is very important in a research uh, career. So th that's it. Uh, I not uh, took too much time. So if you have some question, uh, do not hesitate. Thank you. Thank you, Sebastian, very much for your uh, very clear presentation. Could you just tell us a little bit more about this uh, cooperative you are working in? about CRISPR, what are your main mission, what are you doing on a daily basis? Like... Okay, so what I'm doing on a daily basis is, uh, is depend, uh, depends on the day, but I, I, I mean, it's really close to, to what uh, I did in IFRME or at, uh, at the university. I mean, we are involved in many European projects, Horizon uh, 2020 pro project. And so we are doing, uh, experiment, uh, we are analyzing data, we are write, writing paper, participating in conference. I mean, it's really close to uh, institute or university and uh, it is research for sure. And uh, I mean, in some way it will be different because you, are, uh, you could do things that are different uh, from research because uh, for instance, uh, next week I have to do a video uh, uh, showing what we are doing, uh, uh, what kind of research we are doing in our cooperative. Uh, it is, I like it because it changes uh, my daily routine, but generally I am doing experiment, uh, analyzing data, writing papers, uh, like uh, in other institutes. This is very wonderful and interesting. And I also hope that after the video will be ready, you could uh, share it with us, so. Uh, oh, you, 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 you put me some yeah. pressure. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no pressure, even if it will be available a few months later, so we're still interested in your activities, so. Uh, with, with pleasure, with pleasure. Thank you very much. Uh, we have two more questions. Uh, what are the differences between Italy and France in the field of marine ecology? Uh, I think uh, not so much different because uh, marine ecology is worldwide, is similar, I think, uh, 
between uh, most of the country we are studying uh, similar things and i mean uh, research today is really international so you we have not so much different uh, and I saw the second question, how are these achieving a permanent position in your field, especially in Italy? I think I am, I forgot to, to say that, but I am a very lucky person because it's very hard to achieve a permanent position in my field. And I, I, I think in all the research fields, as a researcher, it is very, very difficult, I mean, in France, and also in Italy is uh, very difficult. In uh, university or major institute like uh, Chiana in Italy or CNRS in France. But I was lucky because in my uh, institute, uh, they propose some permanent positions. So if you are a marine biologist and uh, you want uh, you want you can apply to poispa if you if you want do not so there's some uh, there's some uh, positions uh, available yeah yeah it, it is possible it is it it was more easy than uh, achieving a return position in a big institute such as the or chnl something like that okay okay he also mentioned about keeping co contacts with people and that networking is very much important. Do you have some tips on how to keep contact? Because sometimes it's not so easy to stay in touch. Uh, to, to stay in touch, uh, uh, you, uh, for instance, uh, I, I still in contact with my colleagues at the FMA in France because my tips, I don't know, it's maybe my, uh, behavior because I like people so we discussed uh, a lot and uh, we I don't know we we were friends but uh, we have we had a uh, good uh, feeling between us and uh, we so with that we have this feeling that we want to continue to work together and so with my uh, ex-colleague from Infermer we are exchanging message uh, more or less uh, each week we plan to do some uh, project together, some uh, papers together, and uh, also with other people, uh, you can uh, send an email uh, to to speak about, uh, I don't know, what, what, what you want, but uh, it is important to, to think to other people and uh, even uh, just for a little thing, you can send an email uh, and uh, that's it, I, I'm doing that. I'm doing that. Okay, so some um, an email, uh, sharing some information, articles, updates on your research, asking questions also. Yeah, what's yeah, yeah, that's true. And also when the conference will be back, uh, it will be also an occasion to keep contact with uh, people because in your field, uh, they are always the same people, so. Okay. Um, and continue with this networking. Is it important to have in your network people who are not from your field? Yes, yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure, it is also important because uh, there is not, uh, as um, it was said before, uh, Christina, uh, if I remember well, you, you can also change of field. And uh, for instance, also me in my uh, job, I do some, uh, some coding, uh, so it could be an, a, a interesting to know people that are doing other things and uh, that can help you for things, or at the end, uh, maybe you may have another opportunity not to research, but uh, it is also important. As I said before, in, uh, I didn't find any permanent position in research, I say, okay, I will do uh, another job because at the end we have to to be in a permanent place to, I don't know, to have uh, kids, uh, to to stay, um, depending on what are your objectives. But at the end, uh, I travel a lot in France to one city, to other years in another city. At, at the point you, have, you want to stay in uh, the same place. And okay. maybe it's changed. Research and do other 
Is that John? Okay, wonderful. So uh, it's always a good idea to broaden your professional culture by connecting with people from different backgrounds. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sebastian, for your uh, presentation. Um, you. Now we are moving to Dr. Paolo Fattori, CEO and co-founder of TCU and Sterify, and uh, he will present uh, to us the researcher and entrepreneur path. Please, Paolo. Yeah, good evening. Thank you very much to have invited me. Um, so proud to can share my experience. Um, I am, my name is Paolo Fattori, I'm 43. Uh, I've got a degree in chemistry and a PhD in biochemistry. And uh, today I am CEO and co-founder of uh, Tissue, that is a small company that produces medical devices. Uh, it is based in San Marino Republic. And uh, the last year, I have found also a startup that is uh, Sterify. It is based in Turin, and we are developing and certifying medical devices for the heal of uh, uh, microbial infection. Uh, during my PhD, uh, I have studied a um, microorganism. Its name is was Acinetobacter. Uh, it, it is able to um, use phenol, that is a toxic molecule, as a sole carbon source. And uh, I use it as a cellular model because uh, thanks to this microorganism, I have improved my knowledge uh, in biology because I was a chemist and in biotechnology. And I also improved during the, my PhD, my skills uh, in uh, using a lot of different analytical instruments. Uh, after my PhD, uh, I have um, obtained a, a postdoctoral grant uh, uh, during the, that period, I have also teach to, uh, to an, an industrial chemist, uh, biological uh, methods, and I love to teach. And uh, uh, it was one of the things that I missed when I left, when I leave uh, the university. Uh, so I'm very happy now because uh, this year uh, I have obtained uh, a class uh, uh, at the University of Ancona as professor for uh, um, to teach uh, uh, medical device certification and uh, regulatory affair. Um, after uh, the reform that in Italy have changed the, the rules of uh, to, to become a researcher, that definitely end, uh, ended expectations of becoming a researcher, have decided to, to try in industry. And in 2011, I have applied for a lot of positions. Uh, what I would like to share with you is that for every position, I have rewrite my CV, highlighting my skills, uh, fitting perfectly with that, the, the, the open position. <laughs> and uh, at the end of 2011, I have been employed as technological development manager in a small company that produce uh, medical devices. Uh, uh, during the, the period uh, uh, in that uh, company, I have uh, practiced my, my knowledge. Uh, I, I start uh, did that experience with uh, uh, a salary that was around uh, 1,200 euros, but demonstrating my skills uh, at the end of that experience, uh, my salary was of 3,000 euros. Uh, uh, the, the thing that I would like to highlight is uh, that in Italy, uh, you have to demonstrate your skills to obtain a good salary. <laughs> uh, I have decided to, to leave uh, that uh, company uh, because we have different vision of the biomedical uh, field. And uh, I have decided to work to develop uh, my project, uh, protecting my ideas and technologies with the patents, uh, and finally to risk. So in 2017, I have uh, founded the Tissue, that is uh, now a small company that produces uh, uh, different families of medical devices for uh, the regenerative medicines, such as uh, collagen membranes for the guided bone regeneration in oromaxillofacial surgery, for example, uh, different families of uh, bone substitutes, uh, synthetic, both synthetic and heterologous. We apply um, a patented process to remove uh, from animal tissues all those elements that can react with the human immune system. So at the end of the process, the, the product is biocompatible. 
we produce a solution um, with the collagen peptides uh, for the heal uh, of arthritis, for example. And uh, today we are eight employers. Uh, our, uh, we, we have obtained the, the CMR um, at the end of the last year, but we have uh, already implanted more than 33,000 uh, devices this year. And uh, our revenues now are uh, around 1 million and 300 euros, 300,000 euros. And um, we are growing faster. So we are very happy. And at the end of the last year, I have uh, decided to found a new co in, uh, that is based in Turin. Uh, as I said before, we, um, we will produce uh, medical devices for uh, the, um, the heal of uh, bacterial infection. Uh, our mission is, is to lower the uh, use of antibiotics. Uh, so we have, uh, um, we have applied for a crowdfunding uh, the, at, at the beginning of uh, this year. And we have, uh, uh, we have collected more than uh, 330,000 euros. Uh, and we have obtained also bank loans, so now we are um, ready to certificate our products that uh, will be on market uh, at the end of the next year. If I, if I can uh, share some take-home message is uh, that if you have an idea, make a market research before, then make a business plan, show your project to banks, make pitches where there are business angels, for example, and risk starting anyway. In Italy, there's a proverb that is beginning is half the work. And I say that it's a, a good proverb. Another thing that I would like to, to say is that uh, you haven't to be afraid to try because on the job market, uh, who has the PhD about me is more skilled than degreed. And if you don't make a career right away, you will make it over time, changing, for example, jobs every four or five years. These are my take home message. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, we have many questions for you. Uh, the first two are quite in the same topic. First, if there are similarities between researchers and entrepreneurs, and if yes or no, what are the most challenging diff difficulties switching from being a researcher to CEO? Okay, yeah, uh, there are similarities uh, between researcher and entrepreneurs uh, in, in our field, in the field of uh, biochemistry, biology. Uh, I think that uh, it's uh, important for uh, um, someone that produce, for example, medical devices, biological medi medical devices, uh, to have uh, a background uh, as a researcher. This sure is, uh, is important. Um, the difficulties to, to switch from chemistry to, bio to biology, uh, you, you have to study. <laughs> the, difference, <laughs> the difference is that you have to study a lot to, to understand uh, how cells uh, uh, grow. Uh, during, during the degree in chemistry, there's a, a course of uh, a class of uh, biochemistry. So uh, usually some, something about biology uh, is it, studied, but uh, I think that uh, uh, the skills on biology I have, uh, I have improved this skill during my PhD. Uh, to, to become a CEO, you, to, to, um, to found a startup, uh, you, you have to understand that uh, at the beginning, you are uh, the administrator, but uh, if you are a researcher at the beginning, you are also, you are also a researcher. You, you have to, to wash uh, the, uh, the production facility. Uh, you have to, to pay taxes. Uh, so there are a lot of skills uh, that uh, are not a problem at the beginning. You have to, to start so you, you, can, uh, you can try. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'm linked to, to this last question. How many people are you managing at your startup? 
uh, there are uh, three manager in our startup. Uh, my colleague Mauro Fiorini is uh, the research and development uh, uh, manager and uh, he has a, a degree in uh, biology, physiopathology and uh, a master, uh, he has taken a master on biomaterials and uh, we have another manager that is uh, a cell manager. Uh, he, he, he haven't uh, degrees uh, he is a, a good seller. <laughs> okay, and later, do you think that uh, you will be recruiting more people with PhD degree or uh, not particularly? I would like to uh, recruit. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Not, not now, because <laughs> now I we can't, but in the future, maybe the, the next year, maybe for Sterify, that is a startup, uh, we will uh, uh, open new positions. Yeah, we, we okay. will search uh, PhD, uh, PhD. Yeah. Wonderful. He also mentioned uh, about uh, preparing a good page for business angels or for uh, any collaborators. Do you have some tips on this? I think that the, the thing that is mainly request is uh, that uh, you have uh, to clarify your idea uh, and to be able to explain uh, in a simple uh, form something that sometimes is, is difficult because uh, uh, like in my experience, uh, we would like to um, to produce a lot of devices, but in the end, uh, we, are, we, we have more efficacy when we have decided to explain uh, one single device. Uh, so the, uh, the business angels usually uh, have not, uh, uh, has not uh, uh, a scientific uh, background. So, uh, what I can say is that you have to explain something, uh, uh, your idea, uh, and, and this idea uh, must be understand also to the, your grandmother. Okay, uh, thank you for this tip. Um, we have another question, uh, theoretical. Would you accept a PhD in chemistry with a strong background in biology? or they must be biologists? No, we accept a PhD in chemistry, in biochemistry, in biology, in biotechnology. <laughs> PhD that uh, have a background in, uh, from chemistry to, to, bio, to biochemistry and biology, yeah. Okay, wonderful. So there is uh, um, a big field of possibilities. So. Um, do we have, I'm just checking if we have more questions. No. Um, also, maybe, so thank you, Paola, very much for uh, also your insightful and encouraging um, presentation and also sharing with us um, um, your path and how to start a, a startup. And I hope that uh, many other participants uh, got inspired by your background and also noted some tips where, <laughs> how to approach business angels and how to, to prepare a pitch. Thank you. Um, do you have more questions maybe for all participants, for all our speakers? Maybe um, I have one question on um, how to, how in your professional life you talk about your PhD? How do you introduce yourself uh, in this professional environment as a PhD? Do you see yourself more as a, someone with this 
strong, who is strongly scientific or there's uh, also you see yourself as someone from uh, the economic sector. Uh, Christina, is the question to everyone or? Uh, yes, to... yes, yes, yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> I can start uh, answering. Well, um, today I have the chance in being in a company where there are a lot of PhD. And uh, I had the chance uh, previously to be in another company with a lot of PhD. So, uh, I mean, I have the chance in both cases in the industry to be with a lot of PhD. Uh, and what I have to say also is that the field of the PhD matters to a certain extent, but not that much. Because uh, what that a PhD learned during the three years is uh, basically how to do an independent re research. And this applies for all PhDs. And what uh, the most important part, I mean, is the methodology, and this applies to every aspect in industry, at least in the technical field in which I've been involved in. Because when I was uh, doing in Italy, I was working in safety algorithms for railway traffic. And uh, today I'm working with uh, uh, numerical representation of nuclear reactors. I mean, uh, they can seem very different fields, but they share the approach or that I learned during my PhD. So, uh, and all, especially in Framatom today, uh, in my in my group, I think that one third of people are, uh, have a PhD. We have an, we are in the research and development department, which makes sense. So in this case, it works. Of course, during the application, I have to say that unfortunately, uh, having a PhD is sometimes uh, an handicap and not an advantage. It's, we need, uh, as a PhD holder, to defend. In fact, it's not the de the defense. It's not also the defense, the day of the defense, but the defense of the PhD afterwards to uh, explain why a PhD is something that gives an advantage. And um, I mean, in today for me, it's just an opportunity to have a new methodology that can I share with my colleagues. And uh, it's an opportunity for each, each one to learn from, from the others. So, I mean, uh, of course, uh, frankly speaking, uh, in terms of salary, uh, for example, it's not uh, a good idea because someone who had the chance to enter in industry before the PhD or for sure will have a, a, with the same time frame. I mean, the average uh, will have a, a better salary with respect to a PhD in the same amount of time. But with the advancement in career path, it's possible to get an expert position much more easily if we do have a PhD position and it can change afterwards, not at the beginning. Okay, thank you, Alberta, for this sharing. What about others? Christina? Okay, thank you. Um, but for me, the PhD, um, in my, in my experience, uh, in my first position, my job, the, the PhD helped me to obtain a good salary at the beginning. But uh, during the time, during the next uh, month, uh, I noted that inside the, the company, uh, the marketing and the vendors are uh, much more appreciated than the researcher part. <laughs> uh, because inside uh, an, a, com a private company, it's important to uh, uh, sell the product. So uh, sometimes uh, the, the research experience is not... Uh, um, satisfied for uh, for the, the worker. But uh, with the time, with years, I noted that the mentality has changed. Uh, 
between my colleagues because they need my, my knowledge. Meant. They need to understand the scientific approach, scientific approach to understand, for instance, the new biological drugs like uh, advanced therapy medical product. So now my positions change inside the company. Now I am a quadro, as uh, <laughs> uh, Alberto said before, and, uh, and I'm direct scientific director of the company. So my role is now very important to, to all, uh, all uh, departments. But at the beginning uh, is, uh, is that uh, I need to demonstrate my skill. I need to, to demonstrate my capacity to translate the research in a product with uh, all competence that uh, I acquired during the time. Mm, wonderful. Thank you very much, Christina. Sebastian. Okay, no, I, I have not uh, so much to add. Uh, what I want to, to stress is uh, I think uh, the PhD is quite important uh, just after completing it because uh, you are trying to, to get your PhD, a lot of experience you get in your PhD, you want to, to sell it, but after, uh, I don't know, 10 years after your PhD, you have a lot of other experience to to sell in addition to your PhD. And uh, I think uh, you can also stress other experience uh, in addition to, to the PhD. I, I just want to, to say that. Okay. Thank you very much. Paolo? In my field, uh, I think that uh, there are two differences uh, um, between uh, the researcher that uh, in big industries usually is a PhD. Uh, in the small companies, I have seen that in Italy, because my experience is only in, in Italy, um, usually there aren't researcher in the small companies. Sometimes it happens, but usually the small companies uh, uh, have uh, an owner that uh, has an idea and uh, it develops the idea. Sometimes uh, in Italy, the owner is uh, uh, the father, then there's the son that takes the, the company and try to uh, develop the company. But uh, in, uh, in the big industries, uh, usually the researcher are, are PhD and sometimes also the sales manager are PhD because they have a, a, a strong background and they are able to better explain uh, the product in uh, its features. Thank you very much for this additional information. And uh, again, thank you very much, our uh, guests, for your time and your valuable input and for sharing this precious information uh, honestly and giving very insightful advice. And also thank audience for questions we had. So um, we will take uh, a break until- hey, Christina, uh, Christ yes? Christina, may I ask, one last very, very quick question. So we are in time. Do you think that you, to all the four, so just uh, the, the answer is very, very quick. Uh, do you think that your PhD um, allow, allowed you to, to develop more quickly your career? Or not? Well, do you think that? Uh, well, uh, I, I can start answering. Well, yes. not at the beginning. Mm. Not at the beginning. But in the long term, yes. In the, in the long term, yes. What, what, is, what is, I mean, helping me today is the different experience in, in, in different countries and in different fields, including the PhD. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I agree with Alberto because uh, if you do a PhD, this means that you start to work uh, uh, after a few few years of study. So at the beginning, it's not uh, easy, but then uh, you can recuperate the time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah, I think these the are same. the benefits of PhD. Yeah. <laughs> I think the same. It's hard at the beginning, but then uh, the, the the growth is faster. Uh, I, I will uh, I will say the opposite because uh, uh, for for me uh, doing my PhD allow me to go in lot of country, work with lot of uh, international people after master. After a master degree, for me, it was uh, just a dream. <laughs> and uh, I uh, continue directly after the PhD to uh, work with uh, international researchers. So for me, it was uh, really incredible to, to do the PhD. Uh, just uh, just to, to have another, another idea. Okay, thank you. Thank you.